Good morning, folks. We've got major earthquake news for this community. It outshines some stellar forecasting papers we've got as well. Stellar as in both Well Done and Our Star. Let's start there over at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding the last 24 hours on Our Star about as calm as it gets. No sunspots, no solar flares, no filaments erupting, and none of major concern entering center disk today. The solar wind remains quiet as well. Minor fluctuations near ambient quiet levels aren't going to cause much of anything geomagnetically. It is still a mystery as to whether or not the departing coronal holes will impact Earth with their solar wind. The system may have been at too high of latitude. Time will tell. We'll see tomorrow night or Monday morning. Winter weather continues across the north with another airport shutdown due to snow. Not like Scotland isn't used to a bit of powder, too. Folks, we have three papers on ionosphere and electron content earthquake prediction. These make about the 40th, 41st, and 42nd papers insisting that that works. From satellite or ground-based systems, the precursory electromagnetic signal of large seismic events is present up to days beforehand. You can learn about this piece of our earthquake forecasting model at quakewatch.net. The ionospheric models are available on the Prediction Center page, and in case any newbies didn't take the cue two days ago, using the factors any English-speaking person can read, 10-15% to 15 of fault systems can be identified at any given time as being most at risk that day, and you'll capture an enormously disproportionate number of the largest earthquakes. This is our scoreboard right now. The very first earthquake paper we ever wrote, with Ohio State's Dr. Holloman and NASA's Dr. Uyen, was on the solar polar fields. Turns out that seasonal geomagnetism is driven by those massive fields as well, which also directly relates their effects, geomagnetism and earthquakes, to one another. Up next, we've got two papers forecasting upcoming solar cycles. There is a slight disagreement between them which is resolved that the first has the timing right and the second has the magnitude. They say the solar fields, those same ones, are a good way to predict the future of solar cycles by using the max power of the previous cycle. And while looking at that, we have been heading down and down, so the next cycle indicator would be for an even weaker cycle than we just had. Grand solar minimum on deck this century. Website members, today we've got your Fly on the Wall podcast coming in a few hours. At 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time, we'll be on the members chat page live for a hangout. Coming up, we've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.55 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.